The bedrock beneath many ancient cities was honeycombed with caves and passageways. Under the Umbrian hill town of Orvieto, for example, is a labyrinth that remained in use through the Renaissance, when warring noble families cut private escape routes through the maze. The tombs and tunnels under Naples sheltered much of the city's population during the air raids of the Second World War. But far more extensive than these, more enticing than the half-submerged tangle of funerary chapels and hypogea beneath the streets of Alexandria, more awe-inspiring than even the cave cities of Cappadocia, were the sprawling subterranean cemeteries we know as the Catacombs of Rome. The full extent of the Roman catacombs is a mystery. The Catacomb of Calixtus alone contains about 12 miles, or 20 kilometers, of passageways and housed an estimated 500,000 burials. About 60 other catacombs have been at least partially explored, and more, perhaps many more, still await discovery. Altogether, the tunnels of Roman catacombs may be nearly as long as the Italian peninsula itself. Antonio Bosio, an early explorer, was once lost underground for two full days after his torch burned out, groping blindly among the bones and broken lamps of the city of the dead. The catacombs came into being at a moment of transformation in Roman burial customs. For centuries, it had been customary to cremate the dead. There were exceptions to this rule. Some noble families, for example, had traditions of inhumation and victims of lightning strikes were buried on the spot. But for most Romans, a funeral involved buying wood from the priests of Libertina, carrying the funeral couch to one of the public burning places, and kindling a pyre. From the early 2nd century onward, however, cremation was gradually displaced by burial. The reasons behind the transition are obscure. Christians, believing in the resurrection of the body, rejected cremation but there were too few of them to drive trends at that early date. The strong cultural influence of the eastern provinces, where inhumation had long been standard, may have been partly responsible. Ultimately, it may just have been a matter of fashion. Whatever its cause, the transition from cremation to burial placed unprecedented demands on the crowded cemeteries that ringed Rome. Grave plots were already so expensive that cremated members of the middle classes were often interred in columbaria, condominiums of the dead, with hundreds and sometimes thousands of niches for funerary urns. As burial replaced cremation, demand grew for an equally cost-effective means of entombing unburned bodies. From that need, and from the steady growth of Rome's Christian community, the catacombs emerged. The earliest Roman catacombs were family tombs, excavated to extend the capacity of a small grave plot. Gradually, a few larger catacombs were constructed as an expensive alternative to surface tombs. These early catacombs seem to have had no particular religious affiliation. By the late first century, however, Rome's Jewish community had begun to create its own catacombs. This precedent likely inspired the Christian catacombs which were developed on a large scale from the beginning of the 3rd century. The city of Rome stands on thick deposits of the soft volcanic stone known as tufa. Into the tufa, within a half-day's walk of the city, and between 20 and 70 feet, that is, 6 to 22 meters underground, the Christian catacombs were cut. Often starting from quarries or sand pits, they were excavated piecemeal, expanding gradually outward and downward. Though seldom more than a few feet wide, the passageways could be 20 feet, 6 meters high, and were laid out on as many as 5 levels. The walls of the passageways were lined with rows of burial niches, or loculi, sized to fit either an adult or a child. A body would be dusted with quicklime, wrapped in a sheet, and laid in the niche, often with a few bottles of perfume to mask the stench of decomposition. Then the niche would be sealed with tiles or stone slabs. Wealthier Christians and martyrs were laid to rest in arcosolia, arched niches framing a sarcophagus. As catacombs grew, chambers were opened from the main passageways and developed as private mausoleums by families and trade guilds. The catacombs contain some of the first examples of Christian art. Simple motifs, the fish, 
the dove, the anchor, were etched or painted onto tomb slabs to symbolize elements of the Christian faith. More interesting, from an art historical perspective, are frescoes illustrating episodes from the Bible, often using conventions and figures from the repertory of classical art. In this sense, though few of them can be called masterpieces, the frescoes of the catacombs prefigure the brilliant paintings of the Renaissance. Tens of thousands of inscriptions have been discovered in the catacombs. Although the earliest, in keeping with the eastern origins of Rome's Christian community, are in Greek, the majority are Latin. Most consist only of the deceased's name and the words, in peace. A few are more elaborate, like the lengthy poetic epitaphs composed by one 4th century pope for the tombs of the martyrs. Contrary to a persistent legend, the catacombs were never used as places of refuge during the persecutions of the 3rd and 4th centuries. The martyrs of the persecutions, however, were buried in the catacombs, and eventually drew pilgrims in such numbers that air shafts and wider staircases had to be built to cope with the crowds. The massive expansion of the church after Constantine's legalization of Christianity was mirrored underground as miles of new corridors and hundreds of thousands of tombs were cut through the straining tufa. The apogee, however, was short-lived. Interments diminished through the 5th century and stopped in the 6th thanks to a combination of changing burial customs and the erosion of Rome's population. Parts of the catacombs were already closed in late antiquity, as the spoil from new graves was heaped in older passageways. After the fall of the empire, as Rome's hinterland became depopulated and dangerous, The bones of the martyrs were moved to churches within the city, and the catacombs were abandoned. Though never completely forgotten, they vanished from the popular consciousness until 1578, when part of the catacombs of St. Priscilla collapsed, revealing a passageway glowing with ancient frescoes. Since their clearance in the mid-19th century, they have remained one of Rome's leading attractions. The catacombs are only part of the fascinating world beneath the streets of Rome where medieval crypts plunge into ancient sanctuaries and the painted chapels of a Renaissance church balance on the frescoed walls of a Roman mansion. In no other place is so much history visible or so much history hidden. If you're visiting Rome and want to explore the wonders of the subterranean city, I recommend Through Eternity Tours. In addition to their Underground Rome and Catacombs tour, They offer many other itineraries exploring the history and culture of the Eternal City, from famous attractions like the Colosseum and Vatican to sites not found in any guidebook. If you're planning a trip and would like to explore ancient Rome with Through Eternity's expert guides, use the discount code TOLTONSTONE2022 to save 5% on your purchase of any private or group tour. See the video description for a link and additional details. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Told in Stone on Patreon. You might also enjoy my book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants. Thanks for watching.